Hi guys, I'm back already. I'm seeing some things in Stellarium and in scriptures, and I wanted to put it out there since we are headed into some of the most prophetic times of the year right now with the Passover coming up on the Hebrew calendar. And if you are new here, you'll have to watch my last videos to totally understand this one. Today is Nisan 10, April 18th of 2024. As I'm trying to make this video, it is the day marking the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. Nisan 10 is also known as the birth of Israel when they first crossed the Jordan into the Promised Land. And it's sort of the start date, too, of my basic timeline that started on Nisan 10 of 2017. And it is also the day that the lambs were chosen for the sacrifice. The sacrificing of the lambs used to always happen on Nisan 14, but they would choose their lambs on Nisan 10 and keep them for four days. Nisan 14 is the day Jesus was crucified, which will be April 22nd, Monday. I think at this point, one of my highest watch times for something big to happen, whatever it might be, has to be this Sunday, April 21st, the night of the arrest of Jesus in the garden. Since the Psalms match to years, then to me, Psalm 124 sounds exactly like where we are at. Psalm 124 is only eight verses, and it's about calling on the Lord, the flood of the enemies, and war, and escaping the snares. Since the flooding of God's seven vials of wrath already happened, during those 40 days leading up to the eclipse, and the world is now teetering on the point of no return when it comes to these wars, then Psalm 124 would make so much sense for an escape from the snares. And personally, I feel that a perfect night for the great escape would be Nisan 13 this Sunday night. We can pray it happens. We have four accounts of the night of Nisan 13 in the four Gospels. And of course, every word is key information. One really interesting thing is that Matthew tells us that Jesus warned the soldiers that he could call down more than 12 legions of angels. I feel this may be a prophecy for us, and it would not surprise me if this is the year. Whether we see these angels or not, I'm going to stick my neck out and say they will be descending around midnight on Nisan 13. Hopefully it's part of the rapture. Another thing is that in John's Gospel, he writes that as soon as Jesus revealed himself to the soldiers by announcing, I am, they all went backward and fell to the ground. It's just interesting that we have the idea here of a revealing and then the enemies going backward and falling to the ground or perhaps being cast to the ground. It's also pretty unreal that the zero hour of the menorah sign formation is exactly 40 days to the midnight hour of the arrest in the garden. The menorah sign happened on 313, which was also the third day of the 13th month on the Jewish calendar. And the full 40 day fulfillment is also the 13th day of the Jewish year. The three 1313 numbers 
Just like the day St. Peter the Roman of the prophecy of the last pope stepped into position on 3.13.13 and also the Revelation 7 sign being on 3.13 of 2016 and the planet Uranus also called heaven was supposedly discovered on 3.13. And the menorah sign is no joke, people. It's all very real. And John described it all perfectly in order in Revelation. The first four angels came out of the temple filled with wrath, having just passed through the waters of Aquarius, two with sharp sickles ready for reaping, and two calling for them to get busy reaping, then the very next verse is the great and marvelous sign in the heavens of the seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. And that's exactly how the sign was formed. After the first four angels passed through the waters of Aquarius and filled up their vials, we had the formation of the menorah, and the rest of the eight short verses of chapter 15 is basically the other three angels still needing to pass through the waters within that 40-day period with the god of war Mars ending the exact 40 days during the eclipse. The reason John is saying that he saw those who had gotten victory over the beast is because the beginning of the previous chapter, chapter 14, is about the second eclipse of October 14th, which I guess now I'm seeing that it makes total sense that the eclipse of the 14th would be the start of the 14th chapter. And that's the second mention of the 144,000 too. There is also five months or 150 days between that eclipse and the menorah sign of chapter 15, where John is talking about seeing those who had gotten victory. And who knows, it's possible that 144,000 have been sealed in Israel right now. Perhaps they are the twelve legions of angels that Jesus could call upon on Nisan 13 that I feel was prophesied by Matthew during his account of Nisan 13. Now that's a wild thought. But what I'm saying is that the sealing process seems to have ended according to John on the day of the wedding ring eclipse. It is the second time that the 144,000 is mentioned in Revelation. And it had everything to do with that second eclipse. As I showed in a previous video, that the term for Mount Sion that John writes here in verse 1 of chapter 14 is Greek for the heavenly Jerusalem. It's the same as Paul writes in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22. It's the kingdom that cannot be shaken. The 144,000 is basically about a sealing process, sealing the servants of our God in their foreheads. And the second mention there at the second eclipse is 42 months after the first sign of the 144,000 in chapter 7. The things I pay the most attention to these days is what are the biggest arguments among the Christians and especially the watchman communities. The arguments that everyone is having are usually my biggest clues to solving the puzzles. One of the biggest arguments 
is about calendars. And the most accurate calendar ever devised is what most people call the Mayan calendar, which has been totally eclipsed by all the arguing. The eclipse of October 14th was also called the Great Mayan Eclipse, just like the arguments. There had not been an eclipse over the Mayan pyramids in 400 years, and the Mayan calendar is based on the biblical 400-year cycles of time. It is the biblical 144,000-day count. It was also probably the signal that the sealing from heaven had been completed, and that was one week after Israel's war began. It was also the day that John was given the reed to measure the worshipers. As I've pointed out before, that eclipse first touched the U.S. exactly at Reed's Port and at 9.18 a.m. exactly. And 9.18 of 3 B.C. was the day Jesus first entered the temple in Jerusalem to shed his first blood. So, I guess I'll talk about the first mention of the 144,000 from chapter 7. But I also want to show you some other stuff today from Stellarium. So, chapter 7. From what I can tell, it was the worldwide signal that went out to perhaps announce that it was showtime. That happened at exactly sunset on the last day of Passover of 2020, April 16th. It's possible that the reason John lists off the 12 tribes is because Passover is all about the Jews. And possibly those 12 legions of angels that Jesus could call upon. The count is short one day of 42 months. I'm not sure, but it's possible the reason the missing day in the count is because the eighth day of Passover, as you can see here, on the Shabbat website, it says that the eighth day of Passover is traditionally associated with our hopes for the coming of Mashiach, or the Jewish Messiah. A day late and a dollar short. So that was the day that I got the signal for the start of the sealing of the 144,000. And it could very well have been about sealing the true Messianic Jews in Israel for 42 months before the war began. I hope that makes sense. It's the whole reason back in the summer of 2020 that I felt I should start a YouTube channel warning about the end of days after I saw a few other things happening right after that. The reason I don't talk about this event so much now is because it has become such a huge bit of divisiveness between everyone, and I'm not really going to speculate or argue as to what everything really was or wasn't, so please refrain from posting a bunch of stuff about it. I know how I feel about it, and I didn't have anything to do with it. I was warned by God to stay away from it. I'll show the screenshots here that I took on the day I started my channel. As you can see, it was 618 of 2020. And yes, it was a clock, a death count, concerning a worldwide plague. I had to take two screenshots because I had to scroll down to get to the numbers for April 16th. But back on April 16th of 2020, there were some websites that had like a full page ticker clock on it, showing the minute by minute counts, sort of like 
the U.S. debt clock page, but it was more like one big clock on the page. So on April 16th, I was just goofing about in the garage when I got a message from God, check the clock. At first, I had no idea what clock I was supposed to be checking. It was about an hour before sundown on April 16th, and I was vaguely aware that it was the last day of Passover. And on the West Coast, we are about the last to see the day on the earth each day. So, before the sun went down, I had it figured out that it was the worldwide death clock that I was supposed to be watching. I took my laptop with me out onto the driveway to watch the sunset that day as I watched the clock. At exactly sunset where I'm at, that worldwide death clock rolled over to exactly 144,000. And that's when I knew things were really getting serious. John really has very little to say about the 144,000. All I can tell is that it has something to do with a sealing process and 42 months. And both mentions are in the past now. That's all I know. He never says that they are going to do anything but sing a new song. So, for all I know, it could just be a reference to the next 400 years ahead of us, the undefiled future. In the apocryphal books of Acts of the various apostles, they do refer to new converts of any sort as virgins. So, that's all I know about all that. So I wanted to tell you about some more signs I just saw. After I posted my last video, I got another one of my somewhat cryptic messages from God. It's always like some sudden intrusive thought in my brain when I least expect it. And it's usually just a couple of words, and then I have to figure out what's going on. The message was something like, 1600 is the grave. So, of course, I looked into it all. First, I opened up my folder of pics from my last video because it was all about the seven thunders and that total implosion to the grave of the Titan and that 100-pound weight on his shoulders that Nicodemus had to carry to the grave. And if you remember... It was exactly 100 days from the seven silent thunders to sundown on the Day of Atonement. And we all know that Jesus paid atonement for the whole world. So, while I was flipping through my pics, because I never use them all for my videos, I saw this one. I had subtracted 40 days from the Day of the Seven Thunders. Father's Day last year, and Friday of God's Divine Number, that day of the Schumann Resonance Anomaly, when the planet had a total heart attack, and the day the Titan imploded on the way to the grave of the Titanic, which had been buried for 111 years. And from that day, it was 100 days the weight of Nicodemus to sundown on the Day of Atonement. So when I subtracted 40 days from the Seven Thunders, I got May 9th, which suddenly clicked with me that May 9th of 2019 was the day that I keep showing that Israel was partying in the streets over turning 71. And then the 42 months to that blood moon eclipsing heaven. And you know the whole story that I went over so extensively in my last video. And the moon is all about Israel. So I looked at John's statement again 
about the 1600 furlongs, remembering that it is the final words of chapter 14 before he mentions the menorah formation. That fourth angel that goes through the waters of Aquarius here to get filled with God's wrath is the moon number four. So, of course, John is talking about God's wrath here directed at Israel, about gathering the grapes and pulling up the vines and throwing it all into the winepress of the wrath of God. It is a reference to Isaiah chapter 5 when God says he created the perfect vineyard with the choicest vines and then it all just produced worthless wild grapes. So he simply laid waste to it all and totally destroyed it all. And Isaiah 5 7 says that Israel is the vineyard and the men of Judah is the vine. So that's what's going on here with the moon number four that just got filled with God's wrath at the end of chapter 14. So I went all the way back to May 9th of 2019 when this whole thing with Israel, the moon versus the sun started that I've been talking about this picture here for two years. And I added John's 1600 days and it came up September 25th of 2023. The Day of Atonement. 1600 days of the sun versus the moon, Israel versus Jesus. 100 days from the seven thunders to atonement and that 100 pound weight that Nicodemus carried to the grave. 111 days from the seven thunders and the implosion to the grave of that Titan to the October 7th attack. 222 days from that blood moon Israel eclipsing heaven to the seven thunders. 333 days from that blood moon to the attack on Israel and the 618 of 2023 the seven thunders day and God's divine number to the universe and life itself and on Father's Day too so I opened up Stellarium to see what's happening in the heavens this coming Sunday of April 21st on the 13th day of Nisan when Jesus was arrested in the garden and it was just set to my default location and I am pretty close to Reedsport where that wedding ring eclipse first touched the US and from the spot where I got that last signal too of January 19th about the 40-day warning cry and this is what I saw at 30 minutes to midnight for Nissan 13, the arrest. And it looks like the same position of the moon at around 9.30 a.m. in Israel on Nissan 14. And in case you don't remember from my last video, but this is the exact same place the sun was on the day Jesus was born and on October 7th the day the war started in Israel even though John's gospel doesn't really match the others it seems that some say according to the other gospels Jesus was crucified at 9 a.m. so this would be about the space of half an hour I think I'll leave it at this for now. I may wait until next week and see how things go this weekend. I'll continue to work on things in case we are still here through Passover week. Keep looking up and have a blessed weekend. Perhaps we will all meet in the kingdom soon.